My name is Campbell Jaden, but my friends call me CJ for short. That is, they used to call me CJ when I saw them during the school year. Now that it's the summer months, I don't get to see much of my friends, given that we live on an island near the Gulf Coast. Things around here can be pretty fun though. Between the freshwater and saltwater fishing and looking for blue crabs in the mangroves, there's plenty for a kid like me to do. My dad even taught me how to use our small outboard at the beginning of the summer, which is a lot of fun. I just wish I had a friend to share the experience with. Every so often, my mom and I could hear dad's crop duster ag plane flying past our house, which disrupted the calming sound of waves and seagulls. If I looked hard enough, I could just make out him waving back at me as he flew off to another field. I always wanted to be like my dad, which is why I wore a yellow ball cap featuring his plane embroidered on the front. Dad always found ways to make living out here on the coast better, even taking me up in his plane sometimes, until he went missing, of course. Since then, this house and the coast has felt more like a prison than a home. I know it's taking a toll on mom too, because when she's not out on the outboard looking for him with some of the other locals, she's always just crying on the couch, holding on to one of our family photos. To be honest, I think she's missing him just as much as cursing the day we ever moved here. I miss dad too, but I try to stay optimistic. I try to be the man of the house. I think that's what dad would want me to do. But whenever I ask if she wants to go fishing, or look for crabs to get her mind off things, she just keeps crying and falls asleep. I make dinner for the two of us, and I clean up after her and myself, but even then she just seems more shocked that I made dinner and cleaned than to consider thanking me for doing so. Laying in bed, I listened to the sound of the katydids and cicadas through my open window as I looked up at the full moon, wondering if I'd ever see my dad again. I shifted my gaze to my yellow ball cap, imagining my dad flying the plane on the front in the midday sky. As I looked back at the moon, I could swear I saw it move. I rubbed my eyes, thinking it may be eye boogers playing a trick on me, but no. There was definitely a white glowing light moving in front of the moon, with bright, glowing red eyes coming nearer, nearer to my window. I sprang up out of bed and closed my window, slowly backing up towards my bed as the light drew nearer. Expecting the window to shatter as it came through, I looked in shock and awe as the translucent shape of a bass swam right through the window and floated in front of me just a few feet away. Not knowing what to do, I watched the bass swim around my room, as if it was looking at all the posters on the wall, before circling back to me, moving its tail back and forth as he swam up and down in front of me, opening and closing his mouth, almost like a happy dog. I reached out, expecting my hand to go right through but the bass evaded me, avoiding my attempts to touch it. I pulled my arm back, still bewildered by the sight of this ghost bass, but at the same time, kind of happy that someone or something was finally showing me some attention. The bass turned and swam back towards the window, phasing through the glass once again and stopping just outside, looking at me with those glowing red eyes, swimming up and down again in the air as if it wanted me to follow. I put on my yellow ball cap and quietly crept down the stairs, seeing my mom asleep on the couch. Reaching the screen door, I stepped outside and I closed it ever so gently so as to not wake her up. Turning back around off the porch, swam the bass again, moving up and down, opening its mouth as if excited I had decided to join them outside. I would never had a dog before, as my mom was allergic, but this bass moved happily, like a cheerful dog ready to play. It quickly swam towards me, scaring me half to death as I dropped to the ground, looking up to see it holding my yellow ball cap in its mouth. Oh no you don't, I said as I chased after it, eventually grabbing the hat back and running away as the bass took chase. We continued to play a form of hat tag around the yard, followed by a few games of hide and seek under the light of the full moon. It felt like I finally had a friend on the coast I had always wanted, but tired and sick of swatting at mosquitoes, I got up off the grass and refitted my ball cap on my head again. Well, this was fun, I said, looking back at the floating bass, but I should probably get to bed before my mom wakes up and sees I'm gone. I turned back towards the house to go inside, but the bass swam back in front of me, once again swimming up and down as if it wanted to play. No, I wish I could keep playing, but I've got to go to bed. We can keep playing another night, I said as I carefully crept back in the front screen door. The bass followed me inside as I waved my arms at it to shoo before stopping between the kitchen and the stairs to return to my room. There I could still see my mom sleeping on the couch, our family photo lying on the coffee table beside her. As I started tiptoeing to the stairs, to my horror, the small glowing light of the ghost bass swam towards her. No! 
I yelled out as loudly as I could whisper. You'll wake her up! I waved my arms at the bass as it looked back at me, but it continued to swim closer. I tiptoed towards my mother on the couch, silently flailing my arms at the bass to go away, but as I had grown accustomed to by this point, the bass just evaded my swings. Instead, it swam closer to the coffee table, looking at our family photo. I walked closer to the bass and whispered while pointing, That's my dad. He's missing. The red eyes of the ghost bass shifted back up at me as its mouth opened and closed. Do you know where he is? I asked. The red eyes shifted back towards the photo before shifting back towards me, and the bass began swimming up and down again as if confirming my question. Can you take me to him? I asked, my eyes widened by the news. The bass swam up and down again in its cheerful motion as it made its way back towards the screen door, before phasing through the kitchen wall instead. Creeping outside, the bass continued swimming midair, this time floating just above the coastal tides, once again moving up and down, wanting me to follow. How was I going to make this work? I thought to myself. Using the outboard was sure to wake up my mom, but if dad was out there, I had to follow the bass to find out where. I ran down to the dock and pulled the starter cord of our outboard, firing up the motor. Looking back at the house after the commotion, a light turned on. Oh no, I thought, as I jumped into the boat, rotating my yellow ball cap backwards as I steered it forward. As I looked back at the house, under the light of the full moon, I could see my mom walking towards the dock, watching me as I drove away. I'm going to find Dad! I'll be back, I promise! I yelled back at her, startled, I'm sure, by the thought of losing me too. All she could do was place her hand over her mouth, saying nothing as she watched the boat disappear into the mangroves. Following the bass through the mangrove forest, I went deeper and further from the house than I ever had before. I slowed the boat as we reached the end of the mangrove tunnel, revealing an opening of grasses and shallow water that would usually be almost fully submerged by the high tide during the day. The boat came to a stop as it touched bottom, where the bass turned back towards me, once again swimming up and down. I turned my yellow ball cap back around, stepping off the bow of the boat and following the bass once more. We carefully made our way through where I could start to make out what appeared to be the tail end of a plane, sticking up like a lone mountain surrounded by a forest of grass. Dad! I shouted as I hurried my pace, sloshing through the shallow water towards the plane. The ghost bass came to a stop at the plane, turning back towards me, swimming up and down as if excited by their find. I stopped as well as I reached the plane, mouth agape as I looked over the damage. The nose of the plane was submerged under the shallow water, supporting the angle at which the plane stuck. The wings looked snapped off, likely from the impact, and the glass of the cockpit was partly broken, revealing an interior partially filled with water and seaweed hanging out, similar to the other parts of the plane. I slowly crept nearer to the cockpit as I reached through the broken part of the window to pull the window latch. The bass swam towards me as the water slowly poured out of the cockpit, except this time the bass swam right up near my chest nuzzling me under my chin as it swam by, almost like a dog comforting their owner. I reached out and pet the bass as it swam around me, watching as the water emptied, revealing my father. Tears flooded my eyes as I closed them, squeezing and comforting the bass in my arms. Dad, I said again through the tears, opening my eyes once more. As the bass swam around out of my hold, it entered into the now open cockpit, nuzzling up similarly to the now unsubmerged shorter co-pilot wearing the image of a plane on a yellow ball cap.